my great privilege to introduce the driving force behind the Mercury plaques, David Smith. Come around, folks. Before I start my little spiel, I'd just like to let everyone know that the Duchess of Cambridge gave birth to a daughter. Oh. Uh, course celebration. Th thank you all for coming today. Um, to a place which is all uh, close to our hearts. I think you realise that, and all for different reasons. Um, we are here to remember um, some very special times that we had here at the White Lion, which of course we all know as, as the Pinky. Um, the Pinky dates from the 17th century. And looking around the assembled here, it seems that we have some original customers. <laughs> the popularity of this pub was, of course, due to the fact of the close proximity of the Rens quarters uh, over at Sovinton Towers. Um, and Sovinton Towers itself um, dates from the 19th century, and it's been a private residence. It's been um, a school, and of course, it became the living quarters of the Wren serving at Mercury in 1943. <coughs> there are several versions of why this pub became known as the Pinky. All feasible, but I'd like to know just a record straight by giving you the official version of why. I am indebted to Elizabeth Robinson. I'm here. Who served here in the towers in 1949 and 50. And she tells me that, um, and she's, incidentally, she's paying her first visit to the Pinky since 1950. <laughs> she tells me that um, a wren called Stella Crumby, is that That's right? right, yes. Uh, of WT17 class across in the towers. Painted a, painted a pink elephant for a dance they had across there. And the following morning, she brought the painting across here and it was displayed on the wall. And since then, the pub was called the Pink E. Oh. Which, of course, derived and shortened and evolved to the Pinky, as old Matlow has called it. So now we all know. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that the towers were used for accommodation from 1943, and that's true. However, the towers were used from 1940 to train wrens. They didn't live there, but they were trained there. It was a six-month course, and at the end of it, they were rated Chief Wren WT. And some of these were amongst the very first wrens to be drafted overseas in World War II. 20 chief Wren telegraphists sailed for Singapore in January 1941. Another 10 telegraphists and 11 Wren cipher officers volunteered to serve in Gibraltar after training here and sailed on the 13th of August 1941 aboard a merchant ship, the Aguila. The Aguila was torpedoed by U-201 on the 19th of August and sank within 90 seconds. All 21 wrens were lost. As I said earlier, the Pinky has many happy memories for wrens and matlows alike, and there must be a thousand stories amongst the assembled here today. I received an, e an email. This will get you aring. I received an email from an 85 year old ex lieutenant by the name of Jim Ross. Lived in Birmingham. <laughs> and he tells me that he met his wife in this pub. He was a keen motorcyclist and travelled up here from Portsmouth as he had heard there were, quote, some charming young wrens to be found in Sobot. <laughs> <laughs> he, he recounts the night over 60 years ago when he met his wife to be in this pub, a pretty young wren called Ruby Thomas. He recalls that all the wrens had to be back in the towers by nine o'clock. 
and he was saying goodnight to Ruby when she had to dash off back into the towers to beat the curfew. He said he was just about to pull away in his motorbike and she threw open her bedroom window, threw out a note which said, give me a ring. And he goes on to tell me, that's how it all started and the ring I gave her was a gold one. <laughs> <laughs> true story, true story. He goes on to say that, boy oh boy, did we have some lovely nights in the pinky. He recalls the village policeman, a great man he says, that would pop his head in and say, everything all right lads? Watch how we go tonight, I am fed up with scraping you off the trees. <laughs> He apologised for not being able to attend today, but sadly Ruby now has Parkinson's disease. And, but he sends his very best wishes to you all. My personal memories of this place uh, include... Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about a lot of hard going. <laughs> One of my main memories is the journey here and back from Mercury. Which we all know about. Using all kinds of all forms of any kind of transport we could lay our hands on. The trips down Murder Mile did not become any less frightening, no matter how many times you did them. Ned Davies, who's here today, reminded me that he used to use the moped from the Exped store to get down here. <laughs> and he used to travel back to Mercury. Many people in the back of it as you can <laughs> Taking 10 minutes to get here and an hour to get back. I personally remember abandoned cars on the route on the cabbage patch, with their owners long since gone on draft. And off I was sleeping in a barn not far from here because I couldn't get transport back. I rolled the carpet up. Yes, yes. I recall pledging my undying love to a young lady, Jenny Wren, over the football table in the back room there, <laughs> whilst playing football. How did you play football? On a football table. I thought you said undying over the football. No, 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 no. On, on, on a football table, of course. You only had, not only had to play the football, you had to balance your paint on the end as well. It's quite, quite a complex and... Uh, I have no re re recollection of who that lady was, but if she's here today, I want her to know what a lucky escape she had. <laughs> I recall the old jukebox in the back room, you remember that? Yeah. Um, which caught fire on the, on the first day the place was open. I wheeled it out. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it was there. And I recall... It went through a period of time that no ma matter what record you selected, you always got Hey Jude by the Beatles. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I also did a couple of stints down here as Killing of the Soviet Patrol, and I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. And there are a thousand stories that come out of that. It has been suggested to me that we should be putting a blue plaque up on the site of the old air raid shelter by Sorbonne Towers <laughs> because that's where all the action was. <laughs> it was a very sad day in 1971 when the Sorbonne Towers closed and the Reds moved up to Mercury to their new accommodation block appropriately called Sorbonne Block. I wonder how many of you here know that when that happened the gardeners in Sobert Block dug, dug up all the daffodils and took them up and planted them on the broad wall behind Sobert and Towers. Oh. Where they still bloom today. Yeah. Yeah. You got that one from me. I, that's from there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Our guest of honour today, first officer Polly Booth. Hooray! Hooray! Who is the highest ranking officer to ever serve in the Sobert and Towers. <laughs> she is very welcome. And all of us from the Lady in Blue Plaque scheme are grateful to her for agreeing to do the honours today. Before handing over to Polly, I'd like to make a couple of presentations. Where's Alan? You must all be aware that from 19th... 
Alan, you must be all aware, be aware that from 1956 to 93 there was a, a warship called HMS Soberton, ton class minesweeper. And Alan, the landlord here, has always wanted a, an HMS Soberton plaque uh, to hang in uh, in the pinky. And as HMS Soberton plaques are as rare as hen's teeth, um, he found it hard to find one. However, we have managed to track one down. Uh, I'd like to present it to Alan as a memory to, uh, to remind him of the fondness to which this book was held by the Royal Navy. And still, and still it. Well, the presentation is to Polly. And I'll show you it in a minute, but it's got absolutely nothing to do with this pub. <laughs> I was shopping in Sainsbury's last week with my wife, and I saw this on the shelf. I couldn't believe it. Oh! <laughs> to celebrate passing our exams or commiserate failing our exams. I know at least one of us here met their husband here and lots of us hoped to meet their husband here but didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was only a good time and I, I was thinking in bed last night that the, they're all over the country there must be little old ladies or middle-aged ladies who have very fond memories of this pub and perhaps have pictures in their photograph albums and perhaps as they get older, think, where was that? Oh yes, that was the pinky. So it gives me great pleasure to... Um, Do you want me to hold off? Yes, hold, hold, don't drop, don't drop, drop that. Drop, drop, drop. <laughs> <laughs> um, come up, there we go. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, we trained in Inglefield Block, Nelson Block, Dreadnought Block, Eagle Block. So we did our study with science drinking training in the pinky. <laughs> um, 36 of us had a whip round, 34 sparkers, one bunny, one gully, and nothing from the sea team. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, please. <laughs> I'm no puff.